Welcome to the Timescales Interviews. Today we have a very special guest, the extraordinary author, voice performer, and illustrator, Georgia Cook in London, England. This interview is being conducted and recorded in the United States and the United Kingdom simultaneously. Hello, Ms. Cook. Thank you for being Hiya. here. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good. Getting over some COVID, but I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah, we were discussing that. Yeah. Did, 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 did you guys get a little bit of a heat wave over there? Oh, gosh, we did. Yes, yeah. it reached 40 over here in London, which is literally unheard of in England. So uh, right. I can't remember right. how much that is Fahrenheit, but it's it's a lot. I think I think it's around 104 or something like that. It, that's... Something, yeah, something not fun. Right. Not fun. Good way. <laughs> Not <putting> fun. <laughs> okay. So Miss Cook has just recently gone down in Doctor Who history, and her name will forever be listed as a Doctor Who author with the publication of her story, The Haunting of Brick Place. And this was produced by Big Finish, and it was read by none other than so Sophie Aldred. It was, so how, yes. How exciting is that? That's so exciting. I mean, I, I love Ace anyway and i love sophie aldridge performance she does such good voice work so it's mm -hmm. fantastic yeah so when did you start watching or otherwise enjoying doctor who and who's your doctor uh i, mean, I was born during the wilderness years so my first doctor was eccleston i think i was about eight or nine when the revival series started so i have such a huge uh, soft spot for the ninth doctor and i love the 11th doctor i think he's also fantastic but for classic doctors, I think it's always a toss up between two and seven. So did you ever imagine hearing a performance of one of your original works by somebody as legendary as Sophie Aldred? And, you know, she performed as Ace alongside the seventh doctor, Sylvester McCoy, during the original run back in the 80s. Did, did you ever imagine that something like that could happen? No, no. I mean, I've always loved Big Finish. I think I sort of started really listening to Big Finish during the pandemic, as I think a lot of people did. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't particularly imagine that I'd be writing for them. It's been a really wonderful surprise and so much fun. So what was the writing process like uh, for your Big Finish story, The Haunting of Brick Place? Did you just sit down at a typewriter one day with a blank piece of paper <laughs> and, and type? <laughs> The Haunting of Brick Place by Georgia Cook, or was it more complex than that? Oh, I wish it were that simple and that easy to write things. That would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, I think I was asked originally to pitch some things that were kind of in the same thematic vein as Ghostlight, which was then um, an episode I had to watch a couple of times because it's very interesting atmospherically. And um, I'm kind of well known, or not well known, I'm more known for writing horror things and spooky stories. So I was able to pitch a couple of ghostly themed uh, story ideas. And then they liked the one that then became Brick Place, which is a an actual place in London that you can visit, which is now called Sutton House. And I'd been there oh. a couple of times. So I was like, really? I, I want to set somewhere in a real haunted house. Yeah. So I did. I, I loved that story, by the way, that oh, that thank was, you. It, it, it was, it was so, I mean, it was engrossing. I, I put it on one night with my headphones and uh, it, it got me from the very beginning. I, I oh, was, I, 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 I was very into it. It, it <laughs> felt so realistic. And I actually did catch what you did with the, uh, the reoccurring smells. That, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah, that, that right there, that gave it a very, uh, I couldn't figure out why does this feel so realistic? And uh, I, I, I did catch that. That yeah, it was an ab absolutely awesome story. I really oh, enjoyed. Oh, thank that. you so much. I, I really enjoyed writing it. So, how did you specifically become a writer uh, for Big Finish uh, Doctor Who? Did you submit ideas and then one day just get an email that says, "Congratulations, you're our newest <laughs> <laughs> Big Finish Doctor Who author"? Or was it, was there more to it than that? <laughs> Oh, yeah. unfortunately, I think because of um, sort of how rights work and stuff, you you can't submit things uh, without prompting to Big Finish or to the BBC. They just can't read them. But uh, I I started writing properly again during the pandemic. So I lost my job at the very start 
back in March 2020. And I was sort of sitting on my own thinking, oh, gosh, if I don't do something else, I'm going to go completely mad. So and I'd always wanted to write. So I thought, well, I'm just I'm going to start writing short stories. I'm going to start entering competitions and we'll see what happens. We've all got so much free time this year. Might as well do it. And I ended up with uh, quite a few horror stories, quite a few fantasy stories just sort of out there in the world. And I was recommended to some of the big Finnish producers as a writer who might be able to write some stuff that they were looking for. So I got a little email that said, oh, would you like to, to pitch some story ideas? And nice. since I'd also started to become a really big fan of Big Finish as well, I was like, yes, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That sounds like it all came together at just the right time. That's... It did. Yeah. It's, it really shows that just writing things, just finishing stories and just getting them out into the world, even if they're not your magnum opus, is mm-hmm. so, so helpful not it feels very corporate to say building a brand but just to getting people acquainted with your stuff and showing the kind of things that you love to write is is really really good nice so have you ever submitted stories uh, uh about doctor who or anything to the bbc no no i, I who wouldn't love to write for the, the show <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that'd be amazing <laughs> but um i think you could <laughs> Oh, I, thank I think you. you could. <laughs> I've never written for the screen before. I've written a couple of audio things now, but never for uh, filming. I think it's an entirely different kettle of fish. I, I work in the animation industry usually, and there's so much stuff you've got to think about in terms of characters and how many props, how many scenes. It's, oh, I don't envy people who <laughs> can write for on screen stuff. Right. So how did you become so familiar with Ace um, as performed by Sophie Aldred? Because I believe that you nailed her perfectly in, in the story. Mm-hmm. And um, was was there anything in, in the story that uh, didn't make it to, to, to the final recording where it had to be edited out or anything like that? Was, was your story longer than the, uh, I believe it was an hour and 10 minutes or something? I think what, it's about it 10,000 words, more or less. Uh, how do I, I I think, um, well, I watched all of the seven and ace stories that we've got on TV on Brickbox. There's all of the classic who, so you can just sit down and binge them. Me and my housemate, I think we watched Battlefield several times because it's so, so funny. It's such a good episode. Oh, I wish we had Brickbox. (laughs) I would love to have that. (laughs) Oh gosh. I don't know what the equivalent is in the States, but it's, it's gotta be some other version well, but, um, we have BBC America, uh, which you oh, that you might be Doctor it. Who on that, but as far but it's not uh, it's not uh, BritBox where you can watch all of the British stuff. Uh, oh, I always assumed yeah. that you you had it over in the states. Oh, that's a shame. I don't know. I mean, it may be available here now. Uh, I'm going to check that. Yeah, I, that, that I recommend it. It's really good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's focus on your other works. Um, in addition to you being a writer. You're also an illustrator and a voice voice performer. Um, I am, yes. Could you could you elaborate on that, please? Uh, well, my my sort of day job. I'm a character designer in animation stuff. So um, at the start of a production for an animated series, I'll come in and I'll design what the characters look like. I'll design props. I'll design um, kind of posing and background acting and stuff like that. So that's what I do normally anyway. And then the writing kind of feeds in around that and then the same with the writing um i started doing voiceover work over the pandemic so i've got a microphone and a couple of the podcasts that i write for were like oh would you would you like to voice these as well and i just sort of rolled into that and it's really good fun i love doing it cool okay so um your works that I've looked at uh, to become familiar with you uh, before I spoke with you, um, they seem to range from being kid friendly to horror. And yeah. and uh, your, your story, The Other Little Girl, which is about an imaginary friend in the mirror, uh, something kind of went wrong Doctor Who style in, in, yeah. in that story. <laughs> so um, if you had to summarize all of your uh, works, do they fit into any sort of uh, narrow categories or 
is or is it more broad than than something that could be categorized as just horror for example i think i suppose it kind of depends on where people find me if you know me like if you found my work from podcasts then it's probably all horror i think if you find again if you find me in like anthologies and stuff it's mostly horror and then if it's a literary journal it tends to be kind of fantasy or speculative fiction I suppose is what you'd call my stuff if it's fantasy horror sci-fi I'm not very good at realistic writing or literature (laughs) so I I suppose it's all spec fic is what you'd call it okay so do you plan on writing for a big finish in the future I think that's an answer I'm going to have to answer a bit vaguely. I'd very oh, much like to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and BBC? Uh, I mean, BBC Audio? Have you thought of writing for uh, BBC Audio? That would be really fun. Yeah, I think they do very long prose um, audio for Doctor Who with the BBC. I don't okay. know them as well as I do Big Finish, but I, I've seen some of their stuff. Okay. All right. Um, so could you tell us uh, more about yourself? Um, I, as we know that you are an author, illustrator, and, and a voice performer, what got you started uh, in, in these uh, endeavors and what inspired you? I think, well, definitely the pandemic got me into the writing. Really? And really? the, yeah. Uh, okay. That was, yeah. Uh, and then, oh, well, I've been, I studied animation at the university and then sort of went into that after graduation. So it was kind of like the normal route that people tend to take when they go into a job. I studied and then I went into it. (laughs) But um, when it comes to sort of writing and stuff, I really love the work of Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I love their kind of, their approach to writing um, dialogue, especially, and just sort of the the weird situations they write. I don't know if you're familiar Mm -hmm. with their work. But that's a huge inspiration no. for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I recommend. I'm, okay, well, I'm definitely going to be looking into those. So, so thank you for the suggestions. Um, do you believe that other aspiring Doctor Who authors have an easy entry level into the world of publishing today, or moderate or difficult? I think uh, publishing anywhere is tricky, very difficult. I think it's especially if you want to become a a writer with Doctor Who, I think it's very important to have work outside of the Doctor Who universe. So if sort of fan fiction is a hugely important aspect of writing, I will not disparage it at all, but if all you kind of have to show is Doctor Who fan fiction or fan work, then it it might not be as advantageous as if you've got maybe other sci-fi work that you can show Mm -hmm. or um, short stories or uh, novellas or um, you know, podcast work, anything that shows you can work with audio. I think that's probably going to help you a lot. But I, with everything, it, it takes time and it, it takes a lot of luck. But it's, it's I think if you want to do it, I think you should definitely go for it and try it. Okay. Right, very good. Um, some of uh, some of us, myself included, have seen your Peter Davison cosplay oh, yeah. online, which is excellent. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> um, you. So do you do conventions? I do. Yes, I used to do conventions a lot uh, back before the plague times. I used to do a lot of cosplay. Not as much these days, but I, um, I, th- I've, I know I've started doing conventions as a vendor uh, selling prints and stickers and things. So I think that's the new stage of my convention life. But uh, yeah, I used to do a lot of cosplay back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so ha- how do you feel about the current state of Doctor Who, which uh, it's actually not in a current state because it's not airing, but it's coming yes. soon. And and how do you feel about uh, QT Gatwa taking over from Jodie Whittaker? So excited. I, I, I love Jodie's Doctor anyway. I think she's she's going to be really interesting if we can get her on Big Finish as well. I think she's got some really interesting stories to tell, but Shuti is going to be amazing. Uh, me and my housemate, we binge watch all of Sex, Ed- Sex Education, which mm-hmm. um, he plays a character called Eric in yes. before we knew that he was going to be the Doctor, and we absolutely loved him. He's going to just be amazing, and I'm so excited. 
Yep. I've seen a couple of episodes of Sex mm. Education. I haven't actually binge watched a season yet, but I'm going to do that uh, before the uh, the new series of Doctor Who broadcast. Oh, he's fantastic. He's, yeah, he's, he's going to do such a pitch perfect doctor. He's, he's going to be awesome. <laughs> okay. So um, to any young people, aspiring writers, dreamers, that have a dream or goal of becoming a writer for Doctor Who or anything else that may interest them, um, you being obviously successful, what would you advise them of? Right. I know that probably sounds really, really a bit blare, but <laughs> write things and um, learn how to sort of finish them. Even if it, it's not how you pictured it or you don't think it's particularly good, I think learning to finish stuff is really really important and then you can put it aside and then start a new thing and then put it aside and then start a new thing and slowly you'll build up a portfolio of work a work you can build off of work you can submit to places or send to people even if it's not work that you feel that you can publish at that time you can still go back to it later so I think it's mm -hmm. it's really important to kind of have that clay down that you can start modeling with if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, very good. All right, um, I believe that this concludes this and thank you so much for your mm -hmm. time. Um, is there anything else you would like to add? I think that's it. Thank you so much for having me okay, and thank you yes. for listening to my stuff. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much <laughs> and have a nice afternoon. You too.